Hello. My name is Jacob Fountain. I am finishing up our discussion on truth. Um, just wanted to go over a few final things before we moved on to the next subject of our class. In the last class, we discussed John 14, 6. I'd like to read that for you again one more time. And this is both found in the inspired version of the Bible and the King James version of the Bible. And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The three things to note in here is that when he says he is the way, the truth, and the life, um, the most important one in this discussion is going to be about the truth. What we know about Jesus is also found in Hebrews 13, 8. This is also found in all, all versions of the Bible. It says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. One of the things that uh, you can do knowing that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, is you can replace some of those with each other. For instance, if you were to take uh, Jesus Christ and replace it with truth, because Jesus is truth, you would find that truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You could also say that about the way is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Or the life is the same yesterday, today, and forever. All of these words that describe Christ work with each other. In order to move on in our discussion, it is important to understand that when we are discussing the Word of God, we have to create a firm foundation of truth. So for the purposes of future videos and future discussions, whether they be in, in person or whether they be online or just in this video format, to continue this discussion, we have to understand, we have to follow a, a standard for truth. And it is the belief of the priesthood and Zion's trumpet and those that we worship with, that truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. For those of you who have a Doctrine and Covenants, DNC 90 confirms this in verse 4, 4b. You were also in the beginning with the Father, that which is spirit, even the spirit of truth. And truth is knowledge of things as they were, as they are, and as they are to come. And whosoever is more or less than this is the spirit of that wicked one who is a liar from the beginning. The spirit of truth is of God. I, Jesus Christ, am the spirit of truth. And John bore record of me, saying, He received a fullness of truth, yea, even of all truth. And no man receiveth a fullness unless he keepeth his commandments, his being God's. We follow the standard that if, if it is of God, that not only will it have two or three witnesses, as we previously discussed, but it will be consistent. It will not change. The same advice he gave Adam will be the same advice he gives us. The same advice he gave Moses will be the same advice as he gave us. Moving on, we will continue going through the epitome of faith, or actually, I guess it's the epitome of faith, and we will be using this standard to validate our beliefs. I hope that you continue to follow this discussion as it is important to build the kingdom of God because without this belief in truth, without the beliefs that we hold true to as our banner, um, none of this will even be possible. So I'd encourage you as we move forward to continue to validate your beliefs in truth if your belief does not have backing in scripture, and if that scripture you're using does not have witnesses, perhaps you are using it out of context. It's important that all of our beliefs be found in the word of God.